Welcome back to Nightly Nonsense, where we try to make some sense of the nonsense all around us. Now, I've been accused of creating some nonsense myself, so sometimes you have to make some sense out of my nonsense, right? Uh, we've been talking around the series about uh, what do you do while you're waiting, uh, waiting, and waiting. Wait, well, what happens during this waiting period? What's going on during this waiting period? Talked about uh, Abraham, talked about Moses, talked about, uh, we've mentioned other people. I want to talk about Jacob uh, and a very familiar story. Jacob did the super unusual. Like, listen, when we're in uh, school, we they teach us about you know, evolution, and they teach us about cavemen, you know, and the caveman takes the club, he finds the woman he wants, he hits her over the head, drags her back to the cave, and they're married, right? Like, like it, that's the process, right? And we, we tell each other now, like, hey, I see this woman, I want her, I go find her, I go get her, this woman finds a man, you know, it's all like instantaneous, but uh, that, that's not necessarily how it works with God. See, uh, when God is prepping what he is doing, He's very meticulous about the ingredients of what he is doing. I don't know if you've watched somebody cook lately, really, or bake lately, but there are people like me who get the recipe out and they go to the cupboard one by one ingredients, measure it out, and just dump it in the bowl, mix it up, put it in whatever your pan you're using, and voila, out comes a cake, right? Then there are people who go to the cupboard, pull out all the ingredients, set it all on the counter, get all of the proper cups and teaspoons and everything out, measure everything meticulously, then they carefully put it all together, and then they add their own little pinches and dashes of other stuff that they don't tell anybody about so that it's better than my chocolate cake, right? But they, they make it into this whole big experience. Mine is, I go to the cupboard, I go through my list, I get all the stuff, I put it in. Theirs is an experience, right? So, you know, when you eat their cake, well, it's more likely that you're going to experience something. They care, right? And they watch you. You know, there's people who cook things and they watch for your reaction. They look at you, right? If you're like me and you're a people pleaser, then you have a problem because you don't want to let them down. So imagine putting, you know, a fork full of something that somebody made to your mouth and you're anticipating that it's great and you realize that they put in baking soda and not baking powder or they put in sugar and not flour or they put it like imagine like like there's all kinds of things that can happen when you're just going to the cupboard and you're just grabbing things you can grab the wrong thing my salt shaker and sugar shaker they can look pretty similar now i know that's gonna be hard for you to believe because you guys are probably meticulous and you know where everything is right but if we're just going to the cupboard and we're just grabbing and putting it together there's a problem. God, God doesn't do that. He's meticulous, right? He also wants the cake to go with the rest of the meal. He, he's not going to give you chocolate cake with cereal. Probably not happening, right? He's, he's fixing an entire meal for you, right? Why am I going on and on about food and making myself hungry? Well, first, I'm waiting for food, right? So I'm, I'm thinking ahead to the food that I'm going to have, right? Chicken fingers smothered with barbecue sauce and breadsticks. It's a great combination. That's not what we're talking about. Go to Genesis chapter 29 with me. There's a super familiar story. Jacob is uh, on his way right to his cousin Laban's house. So actually his uncle Laban's house, right? And he's been sent there because Jacob was a bad little boy and he stole a few things that were, you know, kind of important to his brother, like the birthright and the blessing, right? And so he's running away or he's not really running away because I love what it says, right? It says in verse, in chapter 28, I think, right? It says, uh, about the, the Jacob's dream, right? He's running away. But at the beginning of the chapter, it says this, Then Isaac called Jacob, blessed him, and directed him. You must not take a wife from Canaanite people. Arise, go to Padan Arm, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take as your wife one of their daughters of Laban. He's directed. He's going someplace. He's not just running away. And Jacob's running to someplace. You know, one of the problems in my life is... 
I have a hard time knowing when I'm running to something and when I'm running away from something. Sometimes that looks the same. Sometimes we start out running away from something, but like Elijah, we actually run to something. We run to God. Sometimes we're just running away. We're just running as fast as we can in one direction to get out of trouble. And then we recognize, hey, where am I, right? And then God finds us. He leads us back. But sometimes we run to something. That's what Jacob's doing here, right? And God has this whole story in motion. And Jacob thinks he's running away. God has him running too. God's about ready to bless him, right? He's about ready to start getting the blessing that, that his father gave to him. And so as part of this story, uh, he meets this wonderful young woman named Rachel, who happens to be the daughter of Laban. And Rachel is knockout, gorgeous, beautiful girl, right? But uh, Rachel has an ugly stepsister, right? He, she has a, a sister named Leah, who's not nearly as beautiful, right? Probably much nicer in nature, probably has all the attributes that you want in a wife, but she's not beautiful, right? So Jacob falls in love with Rachel, like head over heels in love. And he goes to his uncle and he says, hey, how about if I marry Rachel? And his uncle says, yeah, hey, I got to give her to somebody. That's literally the story, right? Just I'm not making that up. Better that she go to you than somebody else, right? And if you don't believe me, you go to verse 19 and it says, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me, right? That's better than you have. Them. So stay with me, work for me seven years, right? And this is what it says, because this is straight out of Hallmark. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her, right? I, Hallmark doesn't have anything on the Bible, right? This is a, he fell in love with her. He couldn't wait. He worried seven years for a woman. First of all, that's not really the custom back in, right? You make an arrangement and you go get your wife and you have seven years he waited for. Think about the person that you love most in the world and then think about waiting seven years to be able to be with that person, right? Like, but it doesn't matter if it's a friend, if it's a spouse that you want or anything. Just imagine seven years to actually get to spend time, right? Be with them, right? And then again, this is a culture where it's not like they went around holding hands, dreaming, going on dates, doing all these things, right? Jacob's working. He, he's got to tend sheep, right? So he's out tending sheep and just counting the days, right? But they just go by so fast because he's so in love with her. I, I wish uh, that that was how I am when God has something for me. I wish that God said to me, Annie, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to give you what you really want in life. I'm going to give it to you. And I'm like, yes, God, that's great. And I could just wait patiently for it. I, I wish that I could wait and the seven years would seem like seven minutes. Wouldn't that be great? It'd be great if God said to you, hey, listen, I I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to do this for you. Cancer is going to be gone. Your finances are going to be okay. You're going to get the spouse that you, you know, that you've always dreamed of. You're going to have kids. You're going to have whatever, whatever, whatever. And God promises it to you, and you're like, yes. And then you wait seven years, and it just seems like nothing. Now, my seven years seem torturous in general, right? Every day there's head battles. Every day there's like, are you really? Did you really say this, God? Did you really do this, God? Are you gonna give it to me? Are you gonna take it away from me? What if I goof up, God? What What if a sheep dies? And like, am I not gonna be able to get what you promised me? What if this happens? What if this happens? I mean, like, we we spend all of our time worrying about what happens if the promise doesn't happen. So sometimes we have to um, just decide that God is who he says he is, right? He, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And that's just got to be out here and we hold on to it, right? And then we live life as if this is certainty, even though our head tells us all the time it's uncertain. It's uncertain. I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. I can't hear it, right? The good news for Jacob was he got to see Rachel all the time. He got to see her and he knew she was real and he knew that that's what he was working for. Some of the dreams and the things that that we're working for, and we don't we don't know that it's real, right? It's funny because uh, yesterday I was given a uh, heads up about a castle that is for sale, right? So those of you who have listened to me over the last, you know, forever, 
uh, you know that I'm in love with owning a castle. I really, truly want to have a castle. Unlike all the other people in the world that have ever had castles, I really just want to use it for God. Right? Like I, I want I want to minister through it. I want to use every aspect of it, right? And so somebody somebody sent me this picture of this castle, 41 room castle, right? That's for sale for $99,000. And I thought like that's doable. I could sell everything I have and do that in a second, right? I could I could afford it. Right? I could like this would be great, right? And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow, 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 this is really, really cool. Now, this is this is a castle that's hours away from me. I've never seen it, right? But I could I could I could buy it right now. But I would not know what it is that it is, right? It's out there somewhere. That's what that's what God has. He said, Andy, I'm gonna give you a castle. You just you just gotta trust me. Right? You gotta trust me, you gotta walk, you gotta be faithful, you gotta do and be where you're supposed to do and be, and, and, and then all will come. Now, here's the caveat of the rest of the story, right? It says this in verse 21. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. I may go into her, for my time is completed. Can you imagine being Jacob? Let's just make this PG, right? He's waited seven years to be with his wife, right? Seven years to be with this woman, right? And so he says to this, uh, to his uncle, hey, give me my wife. Give it, give her to me, right? I've been waiting and waiting, anticipating. Can you imagine the minutes counting down on, on the last day? He gets right down to the end. And so Laban gathered together all the people of the place, made a feast, Right? So it's celebratory time, all super excited. This is going to be the moment. And then here's the kicker. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah, brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Now again, we, we can talk about all of these things. right? We can talk about the fact that, hey, why didn't Jacob know Rachel well enough to know that it wasn't her? right? Why was he drunk? He deserved all this stuff. But the, the bottom line here is that his uncle fooled him and gave Leah to him. Right? And then came up with a story that said, hey, uh, it's not our custom to give the younger daughter before the older daughter. Now, do you think that Laban knew that when he was making the deal with Jacob? Right? He, he did know that. He knew it was the custom, and yet he still agreed to something. But he broke that agreement. It, it, it's amazing. Sometimes right? we're so excited about what God has for us. And we get to the moment and we think, this is the moment. This is it. This is it, right? We meet the, the person of our dreams and we're like, yeah, this is what God promised. And you know what? If we're not careful, we end up going into the tent that night and find out that it's not what God has for us. Sometimes we can, in our waiting, we get so anxious and so excited about what God has for us that we look at things and we're like, oh, it's so close, right? It's a woman. I mean, that's close, right? It's her sister. That, that's close, right? And we settle for things. Right? Rather than waiting for what God has promised. Listen, we've said it over and over. When God promises you something, he's going to fulfill it to the very last detail. Right? When he tells you that you're going to marry you know, a, a brunette woman you know, that's gorgeous in nature, that is smart in nature, that has all of these things, right? that's what he means. He doesn't mean a redhead. Right? He doesn't mean a blonde. He means that when he tells you that he's got the job of your dream and it includes this, 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 and this, and you're going to be doing these things, that's what he means. He doesn't mean that, hey, go, go find something on your own. God is going to provide it for you. When he tells you that you're going to have children, you cling to that. Right? When he tells you that you're going to make a difference, that you're going to have this ministry, you're going to do all these things, you believe in that. Right? Now, here, here's the deal. Jacob was probably drunk. He was probably celebrating he was going to have his wife. He went into a dark tent and, and didn't realize what happened and what he had done. right? And, and then he had to fix it. Abraham did the same thing. He took a wife right, and had a child, and that wasn't part of God's promise. So the, the deal is, again, Jacob had to work another seven years for Rachel. I had to work another seven years. So 14 years for one woman. Listen, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know how long you've been waiting. I don't know what mistakes have hindered God making it happen right away and all of those kind of things. right? But the bottom line is Jacob knew what he wanted. He knew what the promise was. He got the 
promise, right? But it took a little longer sometimes than, than we think. It took a lot longer than we would have wanted it to take, right? Those things are important for you and I to remember. We need to stick to the promises of God. So, listen, don't settle for a Leah in your life, right? Hold out for the Rachels of life. Know what you want. Know what God has promised you so that you don't just somehow settle for something that God hasn't promised you. Be willing to wait. Not seven years, maybe 14 years, maybe 21 years, maybe 28 years. God forbid. What are you doing during that waiting? And you know what? If you're focused on what God has you to do, the preparation, all of that kind of stuff, it might go a lot faster than we would think. When we're focused on what we don't have, what we want, man, those days, man, they draw out a lot, right? When we're just, we want what we want, but we aren't able to have it right then. And so we just focus on what we don't have. Focus on what you do have. Focus on what you are supposed to be doing. And then watch and see as God anticipating uh, you and, and your reaction. I think God's creating things for you. And he loves you. And he wants to give those things to you in a way that blows your mind. Right? At just the right time. At the right moment. So we'll see you next time. Nightly Nonsense. As we talk about what to do while we're waiting.